Bible, uh, put Revelation chapter 19, verse 1. We're going to start with that tonight. How many has been keeping up with the, um, the news? Let me see your hands. What's happening in Israel? Okay, it's good to keep up with that. Because uh, this terrorist group is right on the border of Israel right now. Up there in where Syria, the northern part. And they are something that's going to have to be de dealt with. Either by the United States or Europe or Israel. So let's uh, read in this and... Uh, as we go back and study the scriptures all the way from the garden all the way up to this point, what really strengthens me is that as I read all of the different prophecies that was prophesied by the prophets, and I've studied the scriptures, they have all come about just like the Lord said they would come about. I mean, it was prophesied that Jesus would be born in Bethlehem. Where was he born anyway? Where was Jesus born? Bethlehem, just like the Bible says. He would be crucified. In Isaiah 53 talks about the crucifixion. He was crucified for our sins. Talks about the rapture. Talks about the second coming. All the things in the past that he would ride in into Jerusalem on a donkey. But this time in Revelation, he's going to ride a white horse. And we'll be on our white horses riding with him. So let's uh, read this and get a gist of what I want to say tonight. John is speaking. Now, when you read the book of Revelation, he talks about things in the, in the heavenly realm, but he talks about things on the earthly realm. You keep that in mind when you read the book of Revelation. He talks about the throne. Where's the throne at? In heaven. So he's talking about the heavenly throne up there. Now, we know that Jesus ascended into heaven. Think about it. Who are these folks? Who is this great crowd in heaven? And how did they get there? See, all those things should go through your mind, and therefore you need to be able to identify the crowd in heaven. Now, we know that... Um, over in the book of Hebrews, it talks about that great crowd of witnesses. How I many remember that? Huh? In, in, in uh, Hebrews, this big crowd of, of witnesses up there that are, t you know, sh shouting us on. Here's this crowd in heaven exclaiming, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Salvation and glory and splendor and majesty and power, dominion and authority belongs to our God. Now, this is what this crowd of folks are saying. So let's see if we can identify them folks. Let's go to the next verse. <clears throat> because his judgments, his condemnation and punishment, his sins of doom are true and sound and just and upright. He has judged, I can't see that too good, so I'll read it right here. He has judged, convicted, pronounced sentence, and doom the great and notorious harlot, adulteress, who corrupted and demoralized and poisoned the earth with her looseness and adulterous idolatry, and he has avenged visit on her the penalty for the blood of the servants at her hand. Verse uh, 3. Now he's talking about this harlot. You know, and, and right away we know that in the book of Revelation there's a lot of uh, symbolic symbols. There's the beast. There's Satan. Uh, all of that. But you can clear it up that this harlot It's not just a woman. Some say that this is a system. All right, let's move on. 
And again they shouted, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. The smoke of her burning shall continue to ascend forever and ever through these eternities of eternities. Verse 4. Then the 24 elders of the heavenly Sanhedrins and the four living creatures fell prostrate and worship, paying divine honor to God who sits on the throne saying, Amen, Hallelujah, and praise the Lord. Now I want to stop here just for a moment. <coughs> me. I'm using this tonight to get through this here chest thing here. You know, right now we all feel some feel probably tired. You probably worked today, you know. How many has ever had a, a spurt of energy when you were real tired and you just had a spurt of energy to do something? Anybody in here? Oh, look at the hands. Yeah. You know, you could say from 1 to 10, we probably, uh, maybe let's just say we're all on 5. But if the Holy Spirit came in this place suddenly, let me tell you something. We'll all be on 10. You can't muster it up. You can't plant it up. It's God that moves upon his people at a specific time. You know, and I know we hear preachers say, well, you know, we need, a, we need an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I agree with that. <laughs> but I can't make it happen, and neither can you. But here's what I believe that what God is doing now. I believe he's preparing a people just like he prepared the, the uh, 12 disciples. And we know that one went off on the dead end. The 11 disciples and, and, and the 120 up there. How many of you know they were prepped? They were trained. They were taught by Jesus himself. You understand that? And then when the Holy Spirit came upon them, they were bold and courageous, not because of them being so great a person, but because the Spirit of God came upon them and made the weak strong. Do we understand that? that that's very important. So that has caused me to put my faith more in what God is going to do but I know what he's doing today because he's preparing vessels fit for the master's use. And so there's a training that we are all going through. And I don't want you to have to worry about the unction to function. Because in God's timing, it will happen. I said in God's timing, it will happen. And you will know it. And you will be on fire. And people will say, what in the world happened to them? It's all because of the Spirit of God. All right, am I coming through? I want you to put your faith in God. Because if there's going to be a revival before the coming of the Lord, God has got to have people. A good, he's a good commander. And he will have his troops in certain locations everywhere. And when the power of God hits you, you will do what he's trained you to do. So you just remember that. In the meantime, keep yourself pure before God. Study the word. <clears throat> get the word of God in you. Because I've experienced that many times. I've seen, I've seen myself, t uh, just like, it's like an airplane, take it off. When the spirit of God hits me, whoo, you just go way up in the, on the power and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, <clears throat> Here we see Jesus coming back to earth. <clears throat> we need to place that somewhere. When you see the, uh, the Garden of Eden and all the way down the church age, the tribulation years, and just at the end of the tribulation years is where we're going to say, in what the Bible says, Christ will come back. And how many of you know he's going to land on Mount Olive? Okay? And when he lands... It's going to split. And he's going to be able to deliver some of the Jewish people that are in Jerusalem and bring them to safety. <clears throat> and he's going to set up his kingdom on the earth. So where are we today? We are close 
the next event would be the rapture. Now, when you look and see what's happening over there in the Middle East, why is all that happening now? Why is all that happening in the last days? The Bible talks about the last days because God had planned it that way. So we have to understand that things don't happen just like, well, it's just a coincidence. I've lived long enough. I mean, I lived for many years and Israel was never mentioned. 1948, they became a nation. All of a sudden, that's, you turn on the news every day, it's Israel. Israel. What's happening over there in the Middle East? So you have to, you have to see the signs of the day. And then you say, well, Lord, what can I do? Well, we're in the church age, and our biggest job is to be strong and pray for Israel, pray for those leaders that they will make right decisions. And I think that's very important because at some point the church is going to be lifted out of here. The restrainer is leaving. And I tell you, when you, when you remove the light out of a room, it's dark. And people can just about do whatever they want to do because nobody's seeing them because they're in the dark. So we got to watch that we don't fall asleep. That we just don't say, well, you know, I've heard that before. Yeah, I know about that. Yeah, this and yeah, that. You know, you know, everything has been going on for years. The same old, same old. No, it ain't the same old. <clears throat> we better read the signs. And we better alert and, and, and say, Lord, use me in this last hour that many souls can come in. I would love to see many souls. Now, when I look at that crowd, remember we read about the crowd up there. The crowd had to get up there. Well, you say they're angels. Yeah, they are angels. A lot of angels are up there. Paul, uh, John talks about that. So many angels are up there. But there's a lot of saints up there, too. And we know that when they pass from this life, we know absent from the body, present with the Lord. And so that a lot of that big crowd up there are people that are worshiping and have been redeemed by the blood. So let's move on with this thought now. Let's look at five up there. All right, there we go. Then from the throne there came a voice saying, Praise our God, all you servants of his. You who reverence him, both small and great. All right, now he's talking to the people <clears throat> around the throne there. All right, next verse. <clears throat> After that, I heard what sounded like a shout of vast throne, like the boom of many pounding waves, and like the roar of terrific and mighty peril of thunder. Boy, that's a big noise exclaiming now who's making all that noise up there that big crowd who is that big crowd up there you and me making that big noise hallelujah praise the lord for now the lord our god the omnipotent the all ruler reigns all right next verse <clears throat> now we're seeing the picture this is all in heaven at this point so let us rejoice now who is us so you've got to identify us. Let us. Well, let us rejoice and shout for joy, exalting and triumphing. Let us celebrate and ascribe to him glory and honor. For the marriage of the Lamb at last has come, and his bride has prepared herself. All right, there's some identification there. Now, where is this all taking place? Let's get that down. Where? Somebody point up. Heaven. Okay, I'm trying to, don't want you to fall asleep on me. you got to see the picture. Now, this has all happened in heaven. There's this great crowd up there. They're singing hallelujah. And then all of a sudden, let us, the bride, the raptured saints. Now remember, Christ has not, has not come back to the earth yet, the second coming. That's about to happen just a few verses later. We're all still in heaven, and we've got all this noise up there. And there's a lot of these people, hallelujah, and we, under, oh, we see that uh, there's a marriage of the Lamb. 
The marriage of the Lamb. Now, who is the Lamb? Jesus, all right. And his bride. Who is, is his bride? We are. Has prepared herself. You know, I, I, I remember when, uh, and I always have to put my own personal experience because I remember when Susan B. got married, believe it, it was 60 some years ago. Man, <coughs> she was in that beautiful dress. She prepared. I prepared. We were prepared. We prepared ourselves for that. Okay? Now, and so we as a church make sure that we are prepared. All right, what do we have to do to be prepared? Well, we have to, of course, we we're all Christians here. We love the Lord. We're faithful, uh, serving God. We share Christ with people. We, we do many different things for our Lord and for the body of Christ. And now the question is, how did all those people get up there? I would say that again. How did all those people get up there? Hmm? I rode a bicycle. <laughs> See, rapture, resurrection, okay? So you gotta, you, gotta, you gotta get all that figure in your mind. They didn't hatch out up there. They were on earth at one time. We were on earth right here. Now we up there. We are up there. That's talking about us. Okay, that's where we at. Now notice, this is before the second coming of Christ. When you read on into verses, we'll, go, we'll come to the second coming of Christ. But all of this is taking place where? In heaven. And now down here, all these wars are taking place in the tribulation years. And we're up there in heaven getting ready for this supper, celebration. The bride has made herself ready. Hallelujah. Now, I know we think about a bride in the natural, but, but this is a spiritual arena here that we will be involved in. We'll have a relationship with Christ, just like husband and wife have a close relationship and how they love one another and how the husband loves the wife as Christ loves the church. What a beautiful, intimate relationship that we will have with our Lord. Now, this is in heaven. Now, go to the next verse. She, now we, we've said that uh, the church is a she. Mostly in the Bible, she's referred to as a she. But it's a couple of times that the church is also referred to as a he, okay? That we, that, that we might grow into manhood, well, we might grow, the church may grow into manhood. That's God's desire. And there we're, we're, we're identified as a man. But let's move on. I don't want to get into that right now. She has been permitted to dress in fine radiant linen, dazzling and white. That's us now. Okay? That's describing us. For the fine linen is signified and represents the righteousness, the upright and just and godly living deeds and conduct. That's important. So you could pretty well say that uh, the dress, this white dazzling linen, it signifies the righteousness that we've received from, from the Lord but also the upright and just and godly living deeds and conduct and right standing with God of the saints, God's holy people. So God has made us holy, and therefore we do holy deeds. And our wedding gown will, be, will, will signify that, okay? All right, now that's us, okay? Now where are we at at this point? <coughs> Somebody tell me, where are we at at this point? Heaven, right. What's going on down here? Wars and rumors of war, tribulation years, the Antichrist. Oh, a lot of things are happening down here, okay? That's why when we look at the situation over there in the Middle East now, I mean, it is so close 
that at some point we out of here and the uh, restrainer is removed from the earth and all, I don't want to use the word in a slang way, but it's rough, okay? Now, I want to stop here and pause for a moment. We cannot look at the world situation with an American mentality. We have to see what's going on over there. We have to see that Christians right over there right now are losing their heads. Do we understand that? They're cutting their heads off. We got to understand that they are, all their homes are being destroyed and, and there's thousands of them have been killed. Thousands of them have been uh, ran from their homes and their, and their towns. We have to see the severity of what is happening over there, not what's all the time happening over here. Now, there's a lot happening over here that's bad enough. But we have to be able to discern the signs of his coming by certain events that's happening. Okay, now, here we're going back up to heaven. We're in heaven now. The rapture has come. And we find the rapture or, or the resurrection in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and also uh, in... Um, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13, and, and then chapter 5. You'll see all about it, the rapture there. That's the resurrection. So we have, to have that, we have to have the resurrection for this to be fulfilled that John saw. Somebody say amen. How many see that? You see that? See? Before this is what we're talking about right now in heaven. The resurrection has to happen. For us to be up there for that to happen. And then the tribulation is, is taking place down here. That's seven years of tribulation. Okay. All right. I'm just projecting that in there that, we, that for certain things to come true. Now, we're up there. All right. Look at the next verse now. Y'all excuse me for sitting down. It's pretty comfortable. <laughs> then the angel said to me. All right. The angel said to me. Who's me there? John. Write this down. Blessed, happy to be in thee are those who are summoned, invited, called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. I wonder who that is. If you know who that is, raise your hand. Good, good. All right, that's us. Now remember, this is taking place in heaven. Before the second coming of Christ. All right? See, it's important to see these things in sequence or in the proper uh, place as time goes by. All right, now. Now, we are summons, which that's partly, you might say, one reason. You know, say, well, why the rapture? Well, you just want to escape all this stuff down here. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> but we ain't got no choice. We've been summoned. How many, how many of you know ever been summoned to a... Uh, to, to appear in court. Let me see your hands. Yeah, if you don't, what? You know, no, you're going to go, right? We've been summoned, invited, called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, that is the angel said to John, Father, these are the true words, the genuine and exact decoration of God. Now that's no fairy tale. That is no fairy tale there. None whatsoever. That is absolute truth. All right, we've made ourselves ready. We've been summoned. The resurrection has happened, and I'm not going through all of that because you know that backwards and forward better than I do, probably. So you got to get up there some way. And the only place I see in the scriptures that we get up there is when these bodies quit breathing, our spirits are absent from these bodies and present with the Lord. And then the next place we know is the resurrection. And we're all caught up, changed in the twinkling of an eye. And we're all caught up to meet the Lord in the air, to go to heaven. And another thing to think about, you know, the Jewish people, when they had a marriage, they, they, I mean, they celebrated for seven, seven days. How many of you know that? 
I mean, they really got into it, you know. You know, we get married and the next day go back to work. <laughs> That's a drag in it. <laughs> but look at that. We're talking about this marriage supper now. It's a marriage supper. These are the true, and we said the words. Okay, go to the next verse now. Then I felt prostrate at the feet to worship, to pay divine honor to him. Now John is talking here. He's talking to this angel. But he restrained me and said, Restrain, refrain, you must not do that. I am only another servant. Now the angel's talking. And we don't worship angels. Now that tells me a lot because there are some groups of people that call themselves Christians that worship angels. Did you know that? Well, you know it now. There's this particular group that says that Jesus and Satan are brothers. They're created beings. Well, we know Satan's a created being, but not Christ. He's God incarnated in the flesh. He, is, he, he has always existed. Now, it's hard for us to understand that, but that's in the uh, heavenly realm. That's in the eternal realm. We're dealing with eternal things up there, ever and ever. Down here is temporary things. That's why Paul says, don't put your mind and think about these temporary things down here. They're just temporary, but, all, but put your mind on the things above, for they are eternal things. They have always been. They are eternal. All right, look what it says now. And it's hard for me to read that because it's a small writing. All right. I am only another servant with you and your brethren who have been accepted and whole the testimony. Let me get that in and read that from the Bible. I can, I can probably do it better from there. What verse is that? That's verse 1910. Okay. Then I fell prostrate at his feet to worship. I want to say this because I want to prepare you. When the Holy Spirit shows up in power, you won't be sitting in the seat. <laughs> How many times we've seen Frank and me up here praying and the presence would show up and we'd be on our face. Nobody made us boom. And I'm sure that many of you might have experienced that. If you haven't, then I don't know what to say that other than just keep walking with God and, uh, and, and, and you should be able to discern his presence because because when he shows up, you hit the floor. Just like that time when I saw the Lord showed up and I saw the purity. Remember that? I, I saw the purity of the Lord. And, and this is what happens. So I'm preparing you for that. And you don't care what people think. You, your mind is not even on yourself at that moment. You are absorbed in the glory and the presence of God that just... Penetrates every part of your being, and it's just you and him. If you can comprehend that just a little bit, raise your hand, because I, I, I need to know where, what you've experienced in life as your pastor. All right, let's move on to this. Let's finish that one up. I'm a, that's verse ten. All right, here we go. Notice, to pay divine honor to him. So when we're worshiping God, we are really paying divine honor to him of his greatness and his goodness and his mercy. How great he is. And we worship him. And, and, and even in our worship service here, you have to lose track of everybody around you. That's hard to do. And, and, and it's just you and him. 
And even though you're in the midst of people, it's just you and him. Am I coming through? It's, it's hard to reach that sometimes because of our awareness of uh, our surroundings many times. But those are special moments when you can just get lost in his presence and in his glory. And it's just the most natural thing in the world to, to surrender to him and to give him divine honor of who he is. Now that's when the Holy Spirit's moving greatly. All right, let's finish reading this. But he restrained me. Now, the angel restrained John and said, Refrain, you must not do that. I am only another servant with you and your brethren, which basically talking about his brethren, his uh, Christian brethren, who have accepted and hold the testimony Bored by Jesus. Worship God for the substance, essence of truth revealed by Jesus is the spirit of all prophecy, the vital breath, the inspiration of all inspired preaching and interpretation and of divine will and purpose, including both mine and yours. Now, verse 11. Now, that's just an event that uh, John saw in heaven. And now... And after that, I saw heaven open. There's another place in John in Revelation chapter 4 where heaven is open. How many of you know that? Many people say that's in verse 1, Revelation chapter 4, where the church goes up. John is a type of the church when, when the Lord said, come up here. Remember that in Revelation 4 verse 1? Come up here. How many remember that? If you don't, we'll turn to that. You remember that? Some of you don't remember that? All right, turn to uh, Revelation 4, 1. Let them, let them see that in the Word of God. And you'll see that the, open, the heaven was open. <coughs> okay, because this is important. After this, I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. So there John calls it a door, and it's open. Heaven is open. And the first voice which I had heard addressing me like the calling of a war trumpet, said, come up here. And we see trumpet there. Now we know there's a trumpet when the rapture happens. Come up here and I will show you what must take place in the future. All right? So that's how John got up there. And now he's, uh, the Lord is showing John all the things that's happened, going to happen in the future. And that's what we're discussing now. Now go back to... Uh, that other verse uh, 11 in Revelation 19 11. Time's going by fast, but we'll do what we can do. Now, after that, I saw heaven open or a door open. And behold, a white horse appeared. The one who was riding it is called Faithful. I wonder who that is. Let's identify him. That's Jesus. Trustworthy, loyal incorruptible, steady, and true. And he passes judgment and wages war in righteousness, holiness, justice, and uprightness. Now, the first time that our Lord came, he came as the Messiah, as a Savior. That's called the first appearing of our Lord. And this uh, that, that we are actually talking about, and the rapture is the second appearing, and the third appearing... I know that's a new word for some folks, is really the, uh, uh, second coming of Christ. Okay. So remember that. Now let's go to our next verse. Now John is going to describe the Lord. Now this is going to be a little bit different, uh, picture of some of your, mentality of what the Lord looks like, okay? Because most of our mentality goes back the time when he was on the earth and we see all the pictures and he's got, a, you know, we've seen these pictures, uh, uh, movies about Jesus and he's a man and that's what he was. He was a man, but he was also a God and he had a beard and long hair and, we, and that's our picture. But here's another picture that you must un and see the Lord in his resurrected glorified body. His eyes blaze like a flame of fire. Boy, right away you're getting a different picture of Jesus, aren't you? 
and on his head are many kingly crowns, diadems, and he has a title name or inscribed which he alone knows or can understand. Next verse 13. He is dressed in a robe, died by dipping in blood, and the title by which he is called is the Word of God. The Word of God. In the beginning was the Word of God was with God. All right? Let's go to the next verse. And the troops of heaven, troops of heaven. Now that's a different name for the saints, isn't it? Now we become troops. We're called many things in the Bible, you know. The sanctified ones, the called out ones, the elected ones, the Christians. And here we see that we have now become a troop. How many's got their uh, their uh, Cam, they're, they're, what's the boots? You know, they have different type of boots. Um, I know when I was in the Air Force, they gave me these boots. How I many got boots at home? You know, you're going to be dressed in boots. You're coming back on a white horse. All right, look what it says. And the troops of heaven, clothed in fine linen, dazzling and clean, followed him on white horses. All right? Isn't this fun, saints? Are you getting a kick out of it? Are you enjoying this? Now, you'll be in your glorified body, so you, you'll be able to handle that white horse. Okay. Oh, man, you'll have your combat boots on. Ready for war. Coming back to earth. Because, see, the devil is about to take over the earth. See, that's his whole strategy, to become king of the earth, the king of the universe. <laughs> But the Lord Jesus is just about ready now to spoil his plans. Because a lot of things are happening down here. The army, the Armageddon war is moving and he's coming down. And he's going to settle this thing once and for all. Look what it says, the next verse. From his mouth goes forth a sharp sword with which he can smite, afflict, strike the nations now, remember, the nations will be surrounding uh, Jerusalem, okay? If we had time, we could go over to Zechariah chapter 13, I think it is. And, and well, 12, 13, 14 will give you a good picture of this also in the Old Testament. See, the second coming of Christ is in the Old, Old Testament. Now, I know that uh, we can say that uh, the rapture is also in the Old Testament by certain allergies, or not allergies, but analogies, and, uh, and so forth. But it's really clear it was a mystery which was given to Paul. Okay, and he explains that as a mystery. But anyway, we're getting back here. Now look what it says. From his mouth, from, from Christ's mouth, goes forth a sharp sword with which he can smite, afflict. How many of you know all he has to do is speak? He speaks, and that's what God's teaching us, to speak, speak the right things. And he goes on and says, strike the nations, and he will, and he will shepherd and control them with a staff, scepter, rod of iron. He will tread the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath and, ing and indignation of God and all rulers, the almighty, the omnipotent. Now, I know we, we are taught that God is a God of grace, and he is. But God also has wrath. In other words, his grace, and we are in that period of time now. But there's a time when he said, this is enough. <clears throat> he has to deal with it because if he didn't deal with the evil, how many of you know a little leaven leavens the whole loaf? That's why, whether the United States likes it or not, and Israel is about to evidently have to deal with it, ISIS over there. We're all tired of war over here. Israel definitely is tired of war. But I'd rather fight than switch. I don't care nothing about being under the rule of their bunch of laws. 
If somebody said, well, I want to be, well, go ahead. Help yourself. But I don't. I thank God for our country and for what we do have. Yeah, there's things that I don't like, things that you don't like. But overall, I thank God. God's given us some real blessings. Now, look what it says. He will tread the winepress of, of the fierceness of the raft and indignation of God, the all ruler, the almighty, the omnipotent. God is going to do that. And he's got to come down to this earth and he's got to take charge. And he's going to have to kill a lot of people. Because see, at the time of grace that he gave the world for the last 2,000 years, they got worse. So if you got something that, if you got termites in your house, how many would do everything they could to get rid of them? Let's see. Oh, shame on you, killing those poor little termites. Oh, they're just going to eat your house up, that's all. <laughs> that's unfortunately man's will. Man chooses. So God has to deal. Okay, it's his world, and so he has to deal. And, and I can understand that. All right, let's go to the next verse now. Now, he's coming back. He's on white horses. We're with, and on his garment robe and on his thigh, he has a name, title, described King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Now we know we can identify him as the resurrected Jesus coming back on the white horse. And we're coming back with him. All right, next verse. Then I saw a single angel stationed in the sunlight. And with a mighty voice, he shouted to all the birds that fly across the sky. Come, gather yourself together for the great supper of God. Well, that's one supper I don't want to go to. But the birds are going to feast on kings and people that have rebelled against God. Next verse. That you may feast on the flesh of rulers, the flesh of generals, and the captains, and the flesh of powerful and mighty men, the flesh of horses, and their riders, and the flesh of all humanity, both free and slave, small and great. And that is all unbelievers there. All unbelievers there. These birds will come. And they, and he, and they will feast on these, these warriors. All right, next verse. Then I saw the beasts and the ruler, rulers and leaders of the earth with their troops. Now here we're seeing the Armageddon War. The, now we're down here on the earth now. And John is seeing all of these uh, the, Satan's, the Antichrist's troops now. They're all over there, just like you see them over there right now. He says, then I saw the beasts of the Antichrist and the rulers and the leaders of the earth with their troops mustered to go into battle and make war against him. And who is him? Jesus, capital H, who is mounted on the horse and against his troops. And who is his troops? Raise your hand, troops. You're in the army now. You're not behind the plow. Da 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 by which he led astray those who had accepted or permitted to be placed upon them the stamp, the mark of the beast. And those who paid homage and gave divine honor to his statue, that's all the unbelievers that didn't accept Christ, and, that, and they're going to they're gonna receive this stamp. Both of them were hurled alive into the 
fiery lake that burns and blazes with brimstone. Now, God's going to do that when he comes back. His troops and all are going to be working. Remember, this is a big war going on. <coughs> and we know that Christ is going to land on Mount Olive. Isn't that amazing when you think of Mount Olive over there, those mountains, Mount Hora, Mount uh, Zion, Mount Olive, all, everything. Uh, so much is, was done over there. He was crucified over there on that mount. He's, he, the garden was in Mount Olive. He went in there to pray. He taught his disciples on that mountain. He's coming back on that mountain, on and on and on. We could talk about, and he's coming back to that same mount. And there's some everything right over there in the Middle East. So that's why we are in looking and checking out everything that's going on over there because all of that is going to be leading to what we're reading here tonight and studying. Okay? All right. And we're going to have, a, a believe it or not, a part in it because we're on our white horses and we're coming back with the Lord on his white horse. Now, remember, the rapture's already taken place. Before this can happen... The rapture has to take place. The resurrection has to take place. The marriage supper has to take place. And now we're bonded to the Lord, loyal to him, in our resurrected body, on these white horses, and we're coming back to this earth to reign with Christ. Because as he comes back, this time he's going to reign in Jerusalem, on that mountain. And we're going to be in different parts of the world reigning and ruling with Christ doing that 1,000 years of the millennium years. And that's a whole new story there. Well, let's get through this one. Let's go to the next verse now. And the rest were killed with the sword that issued from the mouth of him who, who is mounted on the horse and all the birds fed ravishly and glutted themselves with their flesh. How many of you ever seen a buzzard? Sometimes you're riding up and down Foster Creek Road. I, I imagine you've probably seen the same thing and you see a bunch of birds out there and the first thing you say, oh, look at the turkeys. <laughs> they ain't turkeys. They feeding on a possum probably that you killed the last time when you went by. But they just love to eat rotten food. Very tasty to them. I don't care for it myself, but those buzzards like it. So they're going to, get, they're going to have plenty here. All right, next verse. Then I saw an angel descending from heaven. Now notice heaven is coming down to earth here now. All those troops up there, which we were, all of that had to take place first before the second coming of Christ. Then I saw an angel descending from heaven, he was holding the key of the, of the pit, the bottomless pit, and a great chain was in his hands. Now, this is an angel coming down, and he's got a job to do, and it seems like he does it. Next verse. And he gripped and overpowered the dragon, that old servant of primal times, who is the devil and Satan, all that same person, and securely bound him for a thousand years. So Satan there is cast into the pit for a thousand years. Okay? Now he's not in hell yet. He's not in the lake of fire yet. But he's held down there. And, uh, and then Christ, of course, will be ruling on the earth. And this whole earth will begin to be changed. The curse that's on the earth will be lifted. And man can live in peace. Now, there'll be two types of people on the earth. There'll be the resurrected saints in glorified bodies. That'll be us. Then there'll be people just like you and me on the earth. Now, Satan won't be here to tempt them. So I would imagine that the power of sin would not have uh, a lot of dominion over the people. But if someone does break out in rebellion, that's where we come in. We'll take care of it because we're reigning and ruling with Christ. Some of you guys will be mayor of Hanahan. I told Susan, you know, I tell her she could be mayor of Hanahan. That way get this road paved out here. <laughs> 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 
And you'll now, now, now you will know what, it, what, it, what it's like ruling and reigning, okay? Okay. So we'll be reigning. Somebody will be mayor of Chicago, mayor of New York City. Yeah. And believe it or not, our faithfulness here on the earth in obeying God will, will put us in a status uh, when the millennium years come, that will be where God will place us. How well we reign down here will determine where our position will be in the millennium, okay? There'll be different levels of authority, different levels just like it is today. You have mayors, you have uh, congressmen, you have right on up, and Jesus, of course, is the head. And we'll be all in between somewhere along the line. So all of this is preparation. We're not just down here spinning our wheels. So remember that. Now, for a thousand years of peace, that's going to be great. No more wars. Uh, the lion can lay down with the sheep. Can you imagine a little sheep coming up to a lion, a lion or a tiger, and they're laying down and taking a nap together? That's what's going to happen. This earth is pretty and beautiful like it is, but can you imagine when the curse is lifted? All those weeds in your garden will be gone. That'll be so sad. You have to get rid of your hoe. <laughs> I'm saying that to the Gibbs and us garden lovers. Yeah, it's going to be beautiful and wonderful. It'll be worth it all, believe me. All right, let's go to the next. Now we in verse 20, verse 3. Then he hurled him into the pit, the bottomless pit, that is Satan, and closed it and sealed it above him so that he should no longer, remember now we're back on the earth here, lead astray, notice this, lead astray and deceive and seduce the nations. Now we've got to stop there. Satan is on the earth. And what is he doing right now? Look at that, look at that scripture. Hmm? He's seducing the nations. Deceiving the nations. And leading them astray. Why are they all, why are all those nations over there doing that? Why are they killing everybody? Satan is the deceiver. Boy, aren't you glad you locked up into God? I don't have any desire to hurt anybody, do you? I have no desire to talk about nobody, feel ill towards anybody. I have none of that in me. And I have to give God the glory because it hasn't always been that way. But see, it is God working in us that where he, we can come and do His will, see. So it's going to be worth it all. Now, <clears throat> look at that. Until the thousand years were at an end. Now, a whole thousand years goes by, and a lot's going to happen during that thousand years. And that would be a couple sermons. And that he must be liberated for a short time. Who is he? must be liberated. That's Satan. All right, next verse. Then I saw thrones and and I can't see is that sittings on them on sitting on them were those to whom authority to act as judges and to pass sentence with entrusted. <coughs> also, I saw the souls of those who had been slain with axes. Now let's identify those folks. Anybody know who they are? If, if you do, raise your hand. All right, one, two, one, two, three. Oh, good. You'll see that in, in Revelation 7. These, they, they're up there in, in heaven, and they're under the throne, and they, they were beheaded for their testimony of Christ during the tribulation years. So even though we've been talking about what's going up on up there in heaven, the marriage supper and all of that, a lot of bad things have been happening down here on the earth, and many people have accepted Christ. 
and they wouldn't take the mark, but they lost their life. Their heads were cut off. Have you noticed a house operator over there? They seem to have a thing about cutting people's heads off. Good neighbors to have in it. Of course, they might just shoot you or blow you up with a bomb. They don't know it, but if they did that to us, they'd be, they'd be doing us a favor, wouldn't they? <laughs> some, some of you don't know how to handle that. Well, stay around for the tribulation. <laughs> okay, let's get out of trouble, Bob. Where am I at up there? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. All uh, right, all right, we got two minutes. I'll let you out of here. I, I, I want to bring this to an end. Okay. That's four, isn't that four? Uh, yeah, okay. Then I saw thrones, and sitting on them were those to whom authority to act as judges and to pass sentence was entrusted. How many of you know that we will judge angels? Thus, uh, in in. First Thessalonians, I think it is, tells us that we will judge angels. Did you know that? You didn't know that? Now you know it. We will judge angels. Yeah, we'll be in our glorified bodies when we do that. How many of you know there's a lot of fallen angels that's going to be judged, and they will have to receive their level of, of, uh, of uh, punishment? Now notice what here. We're going to finish on this. Also, I saw the souls of those who had been slain with axes beheaded for their witnessing to Jesus and for preaching and testifying for the word of God and who had refused to pay homage to the beast or his statue. That's the Antichrist and, uh, and his statue and had not accepted his mark or permitted it to be stamped on their foreheads or on their hands, and they lived again. Now notice this, this is another resurrection. Can you see another resurrection here? Hmm? And these are the people that's coming, uh, that was killed during the tribulation years. Christ is back, he's on the earth now, and they are being resurrected, and they've come into their glorified bodies. <coughs> and they will reign with Christ, just like us, 4,000 years. All right, let's finish that up. And they lived again and ruled with Christ, the Messiah, 8,000 years. Now we know that there'll be another resurrection, which will be at the end of uh, the millennium years, which will be the, called the Great White Throne Judgment. We're all familiar with that. And that's all of those that have rejected Christ will be resurrected to stand at that judgment. So, you know, when you think about all the benefits of being a child of God, whatever we have to go through down here, I think it's worth it, you know? It's worth it. I'd rather go with God than the Antichrist. So the Lord has got it all planned out. Our job is to make sure that we walk and be steadfast in our faith and our belief and do and obey the Holy Spirit and obey his word because folks the climax is coming real close if we're real close to it and at any moment we could be out of here just like that just like that and if you doubt that just read about all the other prophecies in the Old Testament and the New Testament now remember when Christ was on the earth those three and a half years, he fulfilled the law. You must understand that. He fulfilled the law. Paul tells about that in Romans. He fulfilled all the prophecies that were spoken about him during those three and a half years. Now get that in your mind. How many's got it? Got it? All right, very important to understand that. And then the church began at Pentecost, as they, most people say, and that we're still in that church age, the time of grace. So we want people to come on into the kingdom during this period of grace time. That way they won't have to experience those tribulation years. 
Let's pray. Father, we ask that the spirit of wisdom and revelation would rest upon us as we went through these verses of Scripture, that we might see how blessed we are to have all our sins forgiven and that we have a great future, and you have planned it out for us. And we thank you, Father, as we go home tonight, that we would just meditate on what the Lord has done on our behalf. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless.